Today, we have a product review. And what product that might be, uh, it would be the Nostalgia Retro Series Electric Company. Uh, this is the Hot Dog Toaster. Now you may be asking yourself, why in the hell would somebody own a, a hot dog toaster? I don't really know. Um, I didn't know they made these things. Someone offered it to me. They weren't, they had never been used. It was still in the box. Uh, so it will be an unboxing today because that's already in the county landfill. But, um, I said, didn't know that was a thing, but yes, of course, I will take that off of your hands. And so I brought it home mightily and, uh, took it apart and put it together and thinking it was just going to be some gimmicky crap. And I got to tell you, it's actually not a bad product. Uh, one of the components of it, as I'll get to here in a moment, um, is actually uh, a really uh, cool thing. So we're uh, enjoying a nice cheer wine old fashioned because I needed something that kind of matched the uh, retro nostalgia color here. The Lightning McQueen in a rectangular cylinder, whatever that is. But uh, so here's the deal. This company is called Nostalgia. And when I went to their website, actually some pretty cool stuff. They got like a taco round table, uh, like Lazy Susan taco deal, something to make cotton candy, popcorn, um, this like old fashioned Coca-Cola looking hot dog warmer type thing and whatnot. Um, so actually some pretty cool stuff. And, and I guess it's supposed to look like, like the fifties maybe, I guess, if I, if I was guessing a decade. So what we're going to do is we're going to put it to our test, uh, and see what we think of it. Now, unfortunately, I only have one hot dog, so we're gonna have to make this count. Uh, there's not a lot of stuff about this. This is uh, very much akin to the meat slicer that uh, Kramer had. Well, where does the meat go? Right here. But how do you cut it on? Right here. But where does the meat go? You know, it's that there's really only like two buttons. There's a, a little darker whatever, and I suggest the darkest setting there is because if you put it on two, um, it's kind of dumb because it's like the bread never did anything and you just pull it out and it's not even like toasty at all whatsoever. There's a little stop button that may or may not work because it's not got the best quality control going on here. And then you've got your eject and I noticed that when it's time to clean, uh, you just, hold on, it usually takes twice. Nope, still not doing it. At one point, this thing pops up like a, uh, What's that game? Uh, Popmatic Trouble. Oh, that's hot. Uh, this is plugged in. <laughs> um, so, uh, uh, what, what's the game where everything, it's not trouble, it's not sorry, would it? What's the uh, uh, concentration, maybe? Where you put things and then it all blows up if you don't do it in time. But, uh, yeah, I'm doing the, there we go, all right. Oh, hey, ho, oh, oh, ho, it's a little hot. Woo! Yeah, so we'll leave that to cool down. And that's why they give you these. These little ovular egg ovum shaped tongs um allow you to put that back at fortunately it cools down kind of quick and they got a little little carrying case right here um kind of weird that you would need to clean that but i guess if you are really hardcore into hot dog toasting uh you might get some i mean i've, I've used this for well a whole pack of hot dogs absent one in the last few days uh to test it out and uh man, man it really puts out some heat as toasters tend to do don't stick a knife. That's kind of odd. You're not supposed to stick a knife in a toaster, but they give you a metal implement to whatever. I haven't used this because I know where my hands have been. Um, and you know, basically there's two weenie holes and two bun holes. Uh, you don't put the weenie in the bun hole. I see what I did there. Yeah. So we've got some, uh, adult, uh, jokes going on right now, but yeah. So the weenie hole, weenies are for the weenie hole and the bun hole. I mean, you could put the weenie in the bun hole. It's not made for that, but it's, it fits. Uh, you know, you, you would just want to, to clean your hands, uh, after going in the bun hole so that you don't contaminate the weenie, but you, it's not important. Uh, they, they each have their own compartment and any idiot can find that's pretty uh, self-evident. Uh, to get back on track. So hot dogs. Uh, yes, I know lips and assholes, blah, blah, blah. But can I tell you, man, lips and assholes is where it's at apparently because, uh, hot dogs are just phenomenal. They're one of my favorite, um, gosh, they'd probably be my top five foods. Horrible for you. Um, however, 
to back that up, uh, I was I was listening to the radio a couple years ago, and they were talking about how they had done a study of all the crappy foods that you can eat, and every time you eat fill in the blank, it takes fill in the blank minutes, hours, whatever off of your life. And hot dogs, as I recall, uh, this has probably been a year or so ago, but I think hot dogs came in like dead first, or I guess it would be they were like the worst thing that you can eat, other than like just like downing like a bottle of you know pig fat or something but uh it, it was like if you eat a hot dog every hot dog you eat takes like an hour and a half off your life but i gotta tell you man um you know 100 hot dogs what's that come out to be you know uh, 150 hours is, it, is, is my math working today 150 hours that's uh you know what five six days so if i eat 100 hot dogs in the next year uh i lose a week of my life i'm cool with that okay i mean because really what am I going to get out of that week that I wouldn't have, uh, that wouldn't have been superseded by the enjoyment of eating a hot dog? Because hot dogs are one of those just phenomenal guilty pleasures for me, particularly, along with Oreos, Duke basketball, uh, V8 exhaust. I mean, there's just certain things in life that I would just uh, do anything to hear or see or feel or be a part of. Or just be around, and hot dogs are one of those. Um, yes, I've seen them under a microscope, not an actual microscope, because I don't have like an electron microscope, uh, but I have seen pictures of what a hot dog looks like under a microscope, and it's pretty gross. But I mean, what do you expect of, you know, just uh, gummed up, you know, mashed up parts that are just, you know, thrown into a casing, and then, uh, you know, boiled or heated or whatever. So, uh, you know, what are you going to do? Um, it doesn't stop me, okay? I won't eat balut, you know, 100-year-old uh, chicken embryo eggs because that looks disgusting. A hot dog, I mean, it looks fine. It doesn't look like anything else. All cased meats are good. Uh, salamis, link sausages, all that crap, man. It's just where it's at. So, uh, while we're talking about that, let's talk about some hot dog issues. Uh, I knew a girl... Uh, and she was from the Chicago area. And she told me, and I can't remember the name of it, but she had moved down here. And uh, every time she went back home, she would go to this particular Chicago hot dog place because they make apparently the best ones in the city. And she would have them shipped down to her uh, southern estate because they do such good business um, uh, that they could afford to ship out hot dogs. Now, if you're shipping hot dogs, you're you're a, you're a super fan. I like that. Uh, I think that's cool. However, Chicago hot dogs are disgusting. If I recall, it has celery salt, like real pickles, like little pickles, uh, but like they're not sliced up. They look like pickles. Uh, tomatoes, maybe onions. It's on some kind of weird ass seeded bread. Um, you know, and then it's got maybe a mustard, I don't, whatever the crap it was. The only thing on there that I would want would be the hot dog. I would dump all that crap off there. You know, that, then you go up to New York and there's that famous place that has like Nathan's hot dogs and they put like that stick with like cheese whiz on it. I don't want cheese whiz on my hot dog. Okay. So, uh, at the conclusion of this video, when we make the hot dog here in a second, I'm going to tell you how hot dogs should be made in my opinion what and, and hopefully you've never tried it this way and perhaps you'll be like huh i'll give it a try but i'm not putting a lot of stock into it and then when you get done with it you'd be like i'm buying more stock because i'm telling you it's it's the bee's knees it's the only way to eat a hot dog and i've done it since i you know could spell hot dog i don't know where i came up with it but that's just what it was so we'll go over that here in a minute so again little tongs not really necessary. If you clean your fingers before they go into either the bun hole or the ween hole, uh, then you're good to go. Now, my hands are clean. However, my nails are kind of dirty because I've been doing stuff. Uh, but uh, they're clean. Uh, I, I, know that, I know that for a fact. So, I'm going to start with the last hot dog that I have, which is a Nathan's hot dog, which I was never a... I was always like a turkey chicken hot dog fan when I was a kid and even into young adulthood 
I guess is what it's called when you're like 30. Uh, but then I went to a zoo one time and they had Nathan's hot dogs. And I had heard about Nathan's hot dogs because I used to watch the uh, uh, Yokozumi Kasiyami, whatever that guy's name is, Kobayashi. No, that's the guy from Usual Suspects. What I can't remember the guy's name that took down uh, all the fat Americans that were in the Nathan's hot dog competition and then for whatever reason quit. And then there was some Japanese girl that came and did it. And those people are amazing. But I used to watch the competitive eating um, and they would always eat Nathan's hot dogs. And I was like, what's the big deal, you know? And then I had one. And I got to tell you, they kind of take in first place. You know, I, I, I'm not a ballpark fan. I don't like some of that crap. Um, I'm a huge fan of, like, cheese-filled hot dogs. I think those are cool. I remember when they came out. A little gimmicky, but uh, I put cheese on hot dogs anyway, as you will see here in a minute. Um, so it just goes to show you that, hey, just take a step out and uh, we're good to go. But Nathan's hot dogs, I had them at the zoo because that's just what I ordered that day. I said, let me try one of these Nathan's hot dogs. And I'm, I'm going to tell you, man, um, they are awesome. And they're bun length, so there's that. Although I find that the bun length is a little relative and a little suspect because, uh, and I don't know where my bun is, but uh, it's around here somewhere. Most buns are shorter than this. But this, like going down the drain, bam, right there in the weenie hole. And if you wanted to, you could pick it up and, you know, take it to market. You got a little weenie holder. Um, you know, there's a lot of things you could do with this. Um, actually, there's not much you could do with this. If you got caught carrying that, that would be kind of weird. Hold on. So, uh, I get my bun. And this was the part of the uh, Nostalgia Retro Series that I was a little worried about. Because there is nothing... It's amazing how unhealthy white flour is for you, and we just eat it. Uh, but anyway, um, it's amazing, uh, or it's not amazing, I'm repeating myself. What I meant to say was the worst thing about a hot dog that can possibly ever happen to a hot dog. I would rather drop my hot dog on the ground and <clears throat> blow it off and continue eating it with like bark and crap stuck to it than I would have the spine break, okay? If the spine breaks, see, okay, right? If this breaks, the whole hot dog is done. You might as well throw it in the trash. And I was worried. I was like, well, how is this going to work uh, as far as having to, you know, split it in? But it goes into, you know, it's a, it's not quite a 45. It's probably a 38 and a half, you know, something like that. But, uh, yeah, uh, the hot dog, uh, the one-sided hot dog kind of makes it tilt a little bit. But when it goes down, it all locks in. Now, what I've noticed about this thing is... Uh, the stop button doesn't work, but I'm never going to use that because I want to stop it. I just manually just pop this up. And, it, and by the way, it's got this uh, this matching deal that does nothing. It's just for feng shui's purpose. Um, it just, I guess it's like a grip maybe so that when you're, yeah, that's what it is. But uh, yeah, I got this bad boy set on char grill black number five, right? Yeah, number five. Got on number five. You don't put it on number five, we ain't friends. And I'm okay with that. Uh, but... When I put this in, a lot of times the bread doesn't go down, so you gotta like kind of help it. So yeah, it's probably made in China, and it's got less than stellar, uh, you know, components putting it together. But for what it is, it's pretty cool. Now, the one major complaint I have about this nostalgia uh, electric electric whatever series is the fact that um, if I want to eat three hot dogs, I've got to cook it twice. Like, it would be kind of cool because, I, you know, I'm sure there's a motor over here, so there's not enough room, but maybe make a double. You know, maybe have a family of four be able to eat all at the same time. Uh, because two hot dogs, this is basically just a snack toaster is what this is. This is, man, I'm hungry. I could go for a couple hot dogs. Good thing I've got my Nostalgia Electric Rogue Series, whatever that, re retro, not rogue. Retro Series Nostalgia Electrics, uh, handy. And this thing, uh, I mean, this this has got to weigh two and a half pounds. It's very light. I could toss this across the room with no issues whatsoever. Like, two finger, just toss it. And, uh, you know, it's, it's not an issue. So if you needed to, um, if, if you were looking for this to be the type of menacing um, kitchen feature that by which you could fend off an attack or something. Like you're in there, la di da oh no, someone's breaking my house. And then you take this thing or you take the cord and start swinging like a bolo. You're, you're just, I mean, if I get hit in the head with, I mean, it doesn't, even, it's plastic. It doesn't even, you know, so that's not gonna do anything. So don't look to this as, you know, your, 
your weapon of choice. Grab something else uh, that, that's going to be a little bit more lethal, uh, the lethality of which you can use to fend off a set attack. Um, but without further ado, here we go. Oh, see, it gets me every, I'm going to break this up. I'm just going to take a little hammer and just a little four ounce ball peen, knock it off, and uh, that won't be there anymore. So I get lock. See what I mean? Lock. It doesn't want to stay. Is it on? All right, well, I don't know why, but why is it not working? A technical difficulties. Uh, hey, ho, ho, all right now. Um, oh, see, see what I mean? And then you just kind of force her down. Now we wait. Now I don't know how long this takes, and a little bit about me and microwaves. Microwave over there above the uh, stove. This is the way I operate microwaves. Everything's in increments of 11. What does that mean? That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Maybe it is, maybe it ain't. But you gotta ask yourself, do I feel lucky? So, ah, you don't wanna get your uh, goat a little close to the, not only does it put hair into the cooker, which stinks, because burnt hair is, burnt hair is pretty bad. But uh, yeah, so that thing's just chilling. But anyway, uh, I'm an increment of 11 person. So for me to cook two or three hot dogs, throw them on a plate, one, 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 start. It just saves time. It just makes sense to me, okay? Uh, two, 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 three, 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 four, four, four. Everything is in increments of 11. Uh, I've done that since I could operate a microwave. Um, I don't know where I came up with that other than I like to be efficient in the kitchen. Uh, this is really, this is kind of warm when you lean over it. I've never cooked the... Uh, Thing with, I mean, it's baking my face right now. So it puts out a little heat, a little heat. And uh, it won't lock down if, as you noticed, the power is off. So I don't know what kind of stupid safety feature that is, but uh, I don't know what it could do if it's off and you plunge the plunger down. But let me get a plate. All right, so we're going to put a plate. And with this plate, we wait for something great. Oh, yes. And if you've never had a cheer wine old fashioned, oh, little bitters, little old fashioned, oh, it's, it's delectable. Especially on a Thursday at, I don't know what time is this, it's quarter to six. So what better time than an old fashioned? This thing takes a little while, but I'm gonna tell you, you'll be impressed. Now I'm a fan, when I was a kid, I would I, I would put the marshmallow in the fire and as soon as it lit up, you know, blowing it off. Man, I let that thing char. I want cancer on my dang uh, marshmallow. I want the thing black as hell, you know, just a charred version of a mushroom. I mean, a mushroom, a marshmallow. And then you eat it like that and it just tastes like, it, it tastes like you're eating the remnants of a house fire. And that's what I like. And I like that. I like just a charred uh, hot dog. I don't mind. The, the bun is the best part of this machine because before I would cook it for 111, stick my items on there, pop it back in the microwave for like 22 seconds, because again, uh, 11. Uh, ooh, got a little fire going on here. And uh, five don't play, I'm gonna tell you what now. Um, and then uh, that, that was just to, to get the components all conditioned, and that would be the bun too. Well, you can only do so much in 22 or 33 seconds with a bun, but this thing, um, as you will see here in a moment, it chars it nice and nice. Uh, now I would I need to test this out and see what happens when you do two fives, kind of like Ross. I'm a seven, or you know whatever it was when he did the spray tan. Funniest episode of all times. Um, that was a good one. And uh, and everything. So what we're going to talk about now is what you put on a hot dog, and that would be how timely Duke's mayonnaise. Now it could be any kind of mayonnaise. It's not important. I find and look. See, it just kind of singes it, but this whole bed is all, you know, like charred up and it's just, it's just right. Now I am not a, woo -hoo -hoo, that's hot. Ah, okay. Yeah. So it's a little warm coming out and it comes into uh, its own. Right? So what we do is um, we just put a layer. You're thinking mayonnaise. Who puts mayonnaise on a hot dog. Me, that's, I do. And several other people do. I'm not the only one. I can't be, right? Um, but I just put a, just a little line just beside it, right? Celery salt and tomatoes, <laughs> mayonnaise, a giddy up. And then, it, see, it just, it lays there beside it. And then I smoosh it together. 
let it kind of make love with itself, kind of roll it there. And then we take the final component, which is a good cheese. Um, I prefer a Colby Jack. Uh, provolone is good for this. Munster is the best cheese ever made. But I basically take the cheese. Today we have uh, provolone, because that's all I had left. And you just put it on there like this. And I'm going to tell you right now, that doesn't look like much. And maybe, depending on how, how quickly you get the cheese on there, it'll, it'll melt or it won't melt. You pop that thing in the microwave for like, I don't know, 11, 22, or 33 seconds. Cheese melts down. Now, one thing I've thought about doing, and I've been advised this would be dumb, but you put the hot dog in there with a layer of cheese on top of it. Any thoughts? Comment in the comments if you have a comment about how smart or stupid that would be. Um, I have a feeling it's a 50-50 shot. But I'm telling you, man, if this thing's made like 19 hot dogs at once, oh, party on, Wayne. Party on, Garth. Hmm. So, that's pretty much where we're at. I've got an extra priest, priest. I got an extra priest of provolone. Actually, it would be, I have an extra priest of provolone. But yeah, so I've got some extra cheese because I don't need this now because I run out of hot dogs. I don't have the reason to have cheese in the house. But ah, cheese is so good, man. It's, it's crazy, um, too, how cheese is made. You know, that float curds and stuff and all that crap. But cheese is also really, really expensive. I don't know why. I mean, I get that it's a laborious process, but to the extent that you would charge what you charge for some cheeses, I think you're just being elitist. So you're asking yourself, are we going to eat this hot dog or are we just going to sit and look at it? We're going to eat this hot dog. Man, slapping your mama ain't enough. I'm telling you right now. If you've never had cheese and mayonnaise on a hot dog, you're totally missing out. It would be like you making out with a girl and never, just completely ignoring the fact that she has breasts. You know? Um, maybe that's a weird comparison, but that's what popped into my head, so that's what I'm going with. And then one day you're like, these uh, lumpy masses on her chest... I should explore this. And then you do, and you're like, where's this been all my life? It's been right there in front of you, okay? It's been right there in front of you the whole damn time, and you didn't even realize it. And now, we've got a machine <laughs> that rock and rolls. Whoop, whoop. I don't know what that was, but it's not important. So, we're going to sit here for another couple minutes. While I finish this delectable, nostalgia-created little piece of cheese, um, hot dog. Mmm, mmm, that's some good hot dog action. I just don't think that enough can be said about these bastards. Yes, there's like goat assholes and like llama lips in here. I'm cool with that, man, because really. It's really what the market will bear in the uh, the olfactory and the sensory things on your tongue. If it tastes good, do it, man. That's just how life should be. So, and probably asking yourself, should it really take only five bites to eat a hot dog? For something so good, shouldn't he be savoring it more? I tend to go to the other end of the spectrum and just devour things that are awesome. It's difficult for me to savor like sushi. I could eat sushi every day of my life. The only thing I don't like about sushi is there's no hot dog sushi, but that's another story. But I devour sushi. I'm, I'm like a ravenous uh, feral pig in Texas. You know, it, it's, it's just destroying crops as every, everywhere I go. That's also an odd uh, way to explain your um, affinity for hot dogs, but there you go. So that ends the uh, review. Oh yeah, whoa! It's still hot after you cook it, so dang. I don't feel pain much. So 
I'll say this from the Dukes Corporation, which is in Richmond. I didn't know this was in Richmond, Virginia. I thought it was south of here. Richmond, Virginia. Dukes, the fattiest, probably most unhealthy, but phenomenal mayonnaise. The Nathan's Corporation, which I think is in New York. Where's this crap at? Uh, Smithfield, Virginia. Okay, I guess that's the Smithfield people that make all the hogs in North Carolina. So from them to the Cheerwine Factory in like Salisbury, Spencer, North Carolina. From my home to yours. Go out and get one of these things. I don't know how the, the plastic doesn't melt right off as hot as this little bastard gets, but I'm telling you, if you bought two of these, I think they're like 24, 26 bucks, something like that. It'll revolutionize your diner. So, hey, what are we having tonight, Mom? We're going to have a little uh, breakfast and uh, bacon and eggs for breakfast or for dinner there? No, we're having hot dogs. What? Huh? What? Because some people boil them, some people microwave them. Now, I toast those bastards. Toast those bastards. Much like I toast you. Salute. Comment. Let me know what you think. Buy one of these things. If you've had one, let me know. If not, buy one and thank me. Giddy up.